Um, welcome to a new session of Memoki webinars. Uh, I'm Gonzalo from Memoki's marketing team. Um, this time, we will be presenting our most recent release, Memoki 8.5. The session will be delivered by uh, Gergely Vandor, our product team lead. Gergely has been working with the company for more than 10 years and knows the application inside out. Today, he is responsible for setting Memoq's development path and planning new releases is one of his main tasks. Uh, if you have questions, please add, ask them to the question panel on your right. We will do our best to answer each question at the end of the session. If we miss to answer one of them, don't worry because we will send a questions report in a follow-up email together with this recording. So let's give the floor now to Gerge. Thank you, Gonzalo. Hello, everybody. Uh, one piece of news is that we are going to talk about the new release, MemoQ 8.5. And another piece of news today is that it is World Emoji Day. And I think this is a good opportunity to shout out to us on our Facebook page, share what you think, share what you feel, either in emojis or words or whatever you choose. Um, Let's get down to business. I'm going to talk about uh, many of the new things in MemoQ 8.5, and also I'm going to maybe reflect upon some of the other things that we released uh, in the last year or so, because there have been many releases, now quarterly releases, four releases every year, and might be easy to miss some things that are in the software. Um, maybe it's a good idea to start with DeepL machine translation support because this might literally be one of the most requested uh, features in MemoQ at least for the last few years. So I really felt torn apart by requests uh, really urging us to uh, support DeepL in MemoQ. And we have done just that with A.5. Um, the, the machine translation integration for DeepL works uh, just like many of the others that are already in MemoQ. Maybe it's the 15th or so machine translation plugin. I think uh, there are probably two things that stand out. One is uh, that uh, users seem to be very fond of DeepL for uh, its mixture of uh, out-of-the-box quality and uh, ease of use and getting started. And maybe one small standout feature that I like in DeepL is it's a good support for tags and formatting. Uh, and as a somewhat related piece of news, we already support the latest version of Sistran now. This is an interesting thing because we also released this uh, updated Sistran plugin in version uh, 8.4 in a bug fix update, which we normally do not do. Um, another uh, thing in the world of integrating with other software is, is our new preview SDK which is uh, something that might sound very technical at first. So this is a tool that enables preview for anything in MemoQ, at least theoretically and technically. This is a, a, um, an integration uh, possibility that allows third-party developers to build external preview tools for MemoQ. And if it sounds too technical for some of you or too theoretical, then, then I'll talk about the first implementation of it, which is our own video preview tool. So from now on, we will provide an additional small separate application that you can install alongside MemoQ. And based on the preview SDK, this tool will enable translators to uh, work with subtitle files, translate subtitle files, review subtitle files, either in the common SRT format or Excel, 
and um, and see real time uh, live preview of the video itself. So what happens is that you are translating the subtitle file in Memoki and you uh, can see in a separate window uh, the video itself uh, skipping to the part that you are translating and, uh, and showing you either the source text if you do not have a translation yet or your translations as you enter them. So basically this is the same concept as uh, as real-time preview in general in MemoQ extended to uh, video files. And also as a small uh, additional feature, uh, we provide numbers about the amount of text, which is an important metric for uh, translating subtitles. If, you, if your translation is somehow too long, then you will have uh, direct feedback in this small video preview tool. Um, and another interesting aspect of this tool is that it is an open source project and it will be published to the world very soon. Uh, this means that any developers who are interested in how it works and anybody who wants to build uh, any preview application for any, any file format or any software localization project or maybe even video games, whatever, uh, they can start with our code and, uh, and work from there. I think I'll even jump into MemoQ right now and very quickly show you how it works. Okay, <laughs> I'm already starting with a glitch. Oh no, okay. I wasn't noticing MemoQ, maybe because of the new logo and I was too used to the old one, so I wasn't finding MemoQ on my desktop. So I have a project set up here and uh, I already have a, a subtitle file here. Uh, and the subtitle file is already open in MemoQ. Um, and the concept itself is very simple. You click segments in uh, you click segments in the translation document, and you see uh, the appropriate part of the video as well. Or vice versa, you can uh, skip to any part of the video, and MemoQ will skip to the same segment. And uh, as you enter. Uh, a translation and uh, go back to the same segment, then uh, what you see in the video preview tool is your translation. I believe that the best way to work with this tool is to have an additional display, which many of you maybe already do have. But if you do not, then you can just pin this window uh, maybe at the same place where uh, where your usual uh, MemoQ translation preview pane is. So I just went to the uh, settings of the video preview tool and, and uh, chose to keep, keep the preview window always on top. And if I did everything right, then I can just place this link here. Also, just a few small additional words about it. Um, if you do not want to uh, stay with the current segment, then you can just click this button here and, and then the video will roll on. So this allows you to see uh, an entire scene if you are looking for wider context. Then you also have an option to loop the actual uh, part of the video uh, or not. You can even choose down in the options how many times to loop it. And there's another option to, to tell the video preview tool how much of the video before and after the segment to show. So in, in my case, this is set to one second, but you can set it to more if that's your preference. Um, about how you 
uh, get this to this might be a little bit tricky so I, I think I might want to even show you so you go to the downloads page of MemoQ itself and it's relatively well hidden at the moment on the tab of that uh, download page and uh, once you have downloaded it uh, the and install it uh, and start it, it will uh, try to connect to MemoQ. So here it is under tools and utilities, among some other fine pieces of software. So when you start it uh, for the first time, it will try to connect to MemoQ and you will need to confirm uh, in MemoQ that you want to allow this tool to register itself in MemoQ, then it will go into your options under external preview tools. And I think this is probably all that you need to know to get started with this thing. Um, okay, let's go on. I mean, let's move on with the uh, functionality, the new functionality of A.5. So this was the video preview tool. Uh, we have some uh, some updates uh, and new features, small new features around terminology. I think these are practically all refinements of things that we uh, added in the last few releases. You may or may not know or remember that uh, since the last release, maybe you can use, you can choose which term basis to use for uh, quality assurance in MemoQ. So you might have uh, a prescribed terminology in one term base that you definitely want to use in QA, and you might have some more noisy additional term bases that you only want to use for reference and not using QA. So this is old functionality now or several months old now. But uh, this has been extended extended to the packages workflow. So when you uh, assign a package for translation by, uh, by a vendor or a partner or colleague of yours, then uh, you can uh, set this up uh, before sending out the package and it will take effect in the package as well. Uh, and also uh, for MemoQ server users, it is possible to uh, set this functionality from the MemoQ server API as well. And there is another thing that's, a, that's again a refinement of something that we already have, uh, which is the differentiation of sub-languages for term-based lookup. Um, so this is for the situations when you have, for example, uh, an English United States term base and an English UK term base in the same project, and for some reason you want to decide uh, to have only, uh, to, to only receive translation memory results from the term base that exactly matches your project languages or to have uh, suggestions from both. And this is again a relatively old functionality and that has been extended to packages, but still for the sake of those who didn't know about this feature, I just quickly show it. So here I have uh, two term bases and this is really as simple as uh, looking at this QA column and then checking and unchecking uh, term bases based on whether or not you want to use them for quality assurance. And obviously, as I said, this is now working in packages and this is working the very same way in online projects. So all of the various uh, workflows in MemoQ now support this feature. And the last one out was uh, the package workflow, which is uh, catching up with all the others. And the other thing was with about the term uh, lookup and and locales or sublanguages. So here we have this new checkbox or not new? <laughs> okay, I'm confusing. 
it again. So this is a checkbox that has existed for a few months now in MemoQ, but now uh, it is also taking effect in packages. And this is under general page under settings and languages. Um, okay, hopefully I didn't forget anything about um, about terminology. And here, here we have something that I want to maybe very quickly cheat to show you. Just please give me one second. I'm not showing my screen now. I'm changing the setting. Uh, so, Hmm. Please just allow me one minute to prepare for this. Okay, never mind. I, <laughs> it's, it's a bit trickier than I thought. So, back to, yeah, back to MemoQ now. Okay, so I cannot really show what happens when you start up MemoQ 8.5 for the first time. I would need to uh, get rid of some configuration files and I will not do it now. But uh, but the first time you start up MemoQ 8.5, it will ask you two questions as you start using some uh, functionality. One is the toggle case feature, and the other is this uh, thing that we call the TEM compare control. Uh, these are two things that we changed around the release of 8.0, and, uh, and this wasn't very well received with many of uh, our translator users. So we have made them configurable. One is, again, toggle case. Uh, where is MemoQ again? Okay. Um, So when you were uh, trying to change the case of some text in MemoQ, either with the shift at the um, shortcut or the, the uh, equivalent button on the ribbon, we had this thing since 8.0, this small uh, pop-up menu that allow you to see uh, the possible choices, and this uh, was unfortunately interfering with the flow of uh, translation because in many cases it, re it required an additional click or an additional, additional keyboard press. And uh, as you see, I finally somehow managed <laughs> to uh, bring this menu here up. So the first time you are trying to uh, use this feature in 8.5, it will ask you to hide or keep this uh, small pop-up menu. If you choose don't hide, then you will continue to have this thing. Uh, if you choose hide, then an MMOQ will go back to how it worked before 8.0, so you will not have this menu, and you will be able to change uh, the case of your text without any additional keyboard press or clicking. And uh, the other thing I wanted to show and finally somehow managed is this other pop-up window, which you also only get the first time you will look at the translation results pane. Uh, this was another uh, design decision that many of you did not like. So in these uh, boxes that compare the translation memory result to what you are translating, uh, use this uh, new track changes style 
uh, display that you see on the left hand side in this window and you can see the old behavior on the right hand side and again uh, we are giving an option for everybody to choose uh, how they want to use this uh, compare control in MemoQ. And uh, also as you can see in this uh, explanatory text here, somewhere hidden in the options of MemoQ you can uh, also uh, change the settings uh, later on. So you click options down up there <laughs> and you go to miscellaneous which is a very rich uh, settings uh, page in MemoQ and here under lookup results you can change this compare box behavior and under translation you can change this uh, toggle case suggestions behavior. But many of you probably won't have to do this because you just need to choose it the first time you encounter it. Okay, so back to my slideshow. And uh, if we still talk about translation productivity, we have made some rather invisible changes that still will affect your work. Uh, it is probably impossible or very difficult to show in a presentation like this, but I can promise you that, that MemoQ is now quicker to respond and, and is uh, more fluid to work with when you open projects, when you navigate pages inside your project, like going to settings or live docs and uh, also in the TM and TB editors, or even just working in the in a translation document like scrolling up or down, working with many segments at the same time. So we have put quite a bit of effort with with an excellent developer of ours to uh, to decrease the delays that you encounter at these places to make MemoQ quicker to respond to get rid of some flickering of the user interface and so on. So we really hope that this makes your life with MemoQ more pleasurable, even if you do not really notice it because it's very easy not to notice when, every, when something works as it really should work. Um, there are some really evolutionary changes in documents uh, important export. Practically with every MemoQ release we we make some refinements, add some new document filters or make some changes. Uh, one thing that is uh, somewhat exceptional with 8.5 is that uh, we have made a magic trick that, that got rid of uh, some old bugs and issues by uh, upgrading some of the libraries MemoQ depended on. So MemoQ uses help from some external pieces of software for some filter related work. And by upgrading those libraries to the latest versions, we managed to get rid of many, many existing issues. Also, another thing that has existed in MemoQ for a while and you may not have noticed, or some of you may not have noticed is that we are now supporting zip files, I think since 8.4. So you can have a bunch of translation documents in a zip file and throw it at MemoQ without having to unzip them. And uh, we have made some refinements there. Larger zip files are better supported now. And uh, also very, very common uh, uh, files that are technically zip files but have a different uh, file extension like many package formats uh, are now supported in MemoQ. And uh, somehow related to our work with, with uh, subtitle files, we have uh, worked on segmentation and encoding. Uh, we uh, made some we uh, enable the users now to make some new options there. Encoding is completely free for now, so any encoding is supported and MemoQ will preserve uh, the encoding of the source file unless you choose to uh, have a different encoding in the export. And uh, 
I frankly do not remember what exactly changed about segmentation. Uh, there is one, I think, rather interesting topic here for uh, that is uh, that affects those of you who are working with MemoQ servers, especially at companies that do work with other companies in a uh, client and vendor relationship. And once again, this is something that is a refinement of a uh, feature uh, that existed since, since 8.4. But to recap, uh, MemoQ servers can now talk to each other to an extent, and they can talk to each other to share uh, translation memories and from 8.5 term bases as well. Uh, this kind of sharing exists in, once again, uh, client and server, I mean client and vendor relationships. So if you have, for example, a large translation company and a small translation company working for them as a, as a vendor, then the large translation company can choose to share a TM or now a TB with the small translation company working for them as a translation vendor and uh, and the and the translators or linguists down at the bottom of this chain okay it wasn't nice to call it the bottom so the people who do the actual work <laughs> uh, will uh, actually have a direct uh, connection or not direct on a uh, tethered connection to uh, the parent server of the large translation company and get TM or TB uh, hits from there. Probably I wasn't very good at explaining all of this. The point is that the large translation company can take their translation memories or term bases and, sh and allow their vendor to make it available to the translators without actually having to send the whole resource to the vendor. So the translation memory is sitting on the MemoQ server of the large translation company, and still uh, translators who are directly connecting to the vendor small translation company can get results from them. Uh, this is only for uh, getting suggestions. So translations are not going to the uh, parent server. And the same applies to term bases. So you get suggestions for terminology, but you are not saving uh, new terms or new term base entries to the parent server. And I think that's it. I was even a little bit quicker than planned, but uh, I am ready to answer any questions or maybe show things that you are curious to see. Okay, we have a couple of questions. So um, regarding the MemoQ preview tool, there is a question from Matthias who arrived to the webinar a little bit late. So he was wondering, how do you load the video and which formats it accepts? Uh, so which formats and what was the other part of the question? So basically, how do you load the video from MemoQ? How do you arrive? How do you know? Yeah. Okay, okay, I think it's something I probably forgot to show. So this is, this is what you start with. So you have a video file and you have a subtitle file. And uh, and if the video file and the subtitle file are named the same, so in our case, only the extension is different. One is an SRT, the other is an MP4. So if you import the SRT file uh, into MemoQ, uh, the video preview tool will uh, receive this file name from MemoQ and magically just open uh, the video file for you. I can even show it to you, maybe it's in Good to see. So if I remove this document here and just drop the 
subtitle file again in Memo into MemoQ. I didn't do anything. I don't have to do any kind of configuration. And I open the document, then uh, the video uh, opens by itself. Okay. And uh, the other part of the question was about, yeah, well, there are just a few more words I cannot resist. You can also, if, you, if your files are not named the same, then you still have a button to open an external uh, video file from right here. So clicking this button here will allow you to open an existing video file. Or you can even open a web URL uh, pointing directly to a video file. So you don't even need to send the video file to a translator. Uh, you can just send them a web URL and you can and they can work with the uh, video preview tool just the same. Have I answered everything? I wonder. Yes, thank you. I think there is another question that it's a little bit uh, different and it's how do you actually integrate uh, DeepL, uh, the MT engine into your memo queue? I guess we can show the users where they can do that. Okay, um, the DeepL, uh, the DeepL machine translation plugin comes with MemoQ, so this is not, there is nothing to do for it, uh, for an end user. You just go to the settings of your project, be it a local project or an online project. You choose the empty settings category, and then this is a relatively new thing, so you, you see various machine translation configurations here. If you have any, I have three different configurations in this case. And you need to edit these, one of these, and, and also put them into the project. And inside uh, these machine translation configurations, you see a complete list of all your machine translation plugins and uh, you can just click the settings of, of uh, the plugin that you want to use and enter your uh, key that you received from the machine translation vendor. So DeepL, just like many other machine translation providers, probably most of them are a commercial company, so they sell MT as a service. You need to sign up, you need to play a subscription, and in exchange you receive an API key that you can enter uh, in one of these machine translation configurations. I have probably resist talking more about this thing here, so how machine translation is set up in MemoQ. This has been there since version 8.2. Just, just one quick sentence, so this is no longer in project options. You can have as many different machine translation configurations as you want and you can very easily uh, switch between them by okay. just clicking the checkbox in the project and so on. One question that uh, is regarding this topic and it is if you can configure DeepL MT for online project templates. Yes, so the question is whether or not it's possible to do it in templates. Yes, so you can, uh, I can even show it. So if you go to a project template, I think I choose one one of these. You can uh, go to the settings of it, and just like in a project, you have a category uh, called machine translation, and you can choose uh, which uh, machine translation configuration to include in your in the in any project uh, created from this template. And this applies to local projects created from templates, and applies to online projects as well. Okay, thank you for that one. And sorry to jump back again to the video preview tool, but there is one more question again. If they upload the video to a project on a MemQ server and they're wondering if external translators will also get access to that same uh, tool, provided they install it on their own client. So the magic itself happens uh, on the computer of the translator every time. 
the video file you do not have to upload uh, to a MemoQ project, or you cannot even meaningfully upload it. Maybe you could upload it as part of live docs and the translators could download it from there as a binary file. This is a technical possibility, but uh, the point is that uh, what you do is you just put your subtitle file. So if you, have a, if you are managing an online project, you put your subtitle files for translation into the online project, you assign the files to translators just like normally do. And then for uh, the translators to, to be able to use the video preview tool in the end, well, two things are required. One thing is that they need to install the video preview tool on their side. So each translation, the translator will need the video preview tool. And the other thing that is needed is some kind of access to the video file. So either you uh, send them a URL and uh, they can just put the URL into the video preview tool and work uh, with the video file online or, or somehow get the video file on the translator's computer. So at this point, there is not much of an online workflow, but it is perfectly possible to work with video files online without actually having to put the video files into the projects themselves. And just one thing that I didn't mention is uh, there is an additional requirement, of course, which is at least version 8.5 of MemoQ. So for users of previous versions, this functionality is not available. So if you, even if you install the video preview tool next to 8.4 or 7.8, uh, it will not be able to connect to MemoQ and register itself into MemoQ. So this is, uh, so the MemoQ half only exists in 8.5 and newer versions. Okay, thank you. There are a lot of people uh, asking when we're going to have a webinar for beginners. We are soon going to upload a new webinar calendar. So if you feel that this webinar is not the, was not the right for you, you can then check other webinars where we will do introductions to MemoQ. But there is another question. And I think uh, maybe, maybe you can explain a bit of how the server to server workflows uh, works. What is the concept behind of it? And what is this about a lookup in TV and TM feature that we have released with 8.4 and 8.5? So how they work? Well, how they work, theoretically, I hope I managed to explain it. How you set it up is uh, going to your server administrator. Oh, I somehow don't have any <laughs> servers here, I think. I managed to delete my configuration file completely. So in the server administrator tool, there is a, there is a separate page for, for uh, server connections. And there you need uh, to obviously provide the uh, address of the parent server uh, and on the, uh, parent server itself, you probably need to open some network ports and uh, there is some security uh, as well. There are some security measures so that you need to work a bit with, uh, with certificates and the like to uh, also make this connection secure. So there is a technical side to it to uh, make the connection work between the two servers. And then if I, and again, I have the concept side, I think I, I explained. So the concept here is that on the parent server, so on the side of the, of the customer, uh, you can share a translation memory or a term base with your vendors, also using MemoQ server without actually having to send the resource to them. So the translation memory or term base sits on your uh, MemoQ server and still your vendors can uh, allow their translators to access these uh, resources for uh, for lookup.
I hope I, yes. I managed to explain this. And there is a question that I guess it was answered with this, uh, with this explanation. So they were saying that they have a server and they want their client who also has, who also has a server to access their TMs and TVs. Uh, mm -hmm. so that they can do work for them. So I guess with this workflow, that would be possible for them. Well, I think it's, at the moment, this is kind of top down. So it all starts on the side of the customer. Let's call it the large translation company. Uh, and what happens is that the large translation company is allowed to share the TM with the smaller translation company and the translation company can allow the translators in the end to work with those resources. In the, the other direction, this is really working. So you cannot uh, allow your uh, customer to do anything with your resources this way. So this is not the workflow we had in mind. But this does not mean that you will not have such workflows in the future. As I said previously, we are considering this the first steps of, of connecting Memoku servers together. And this uh, will fall into a bigger picture of, of uh, a more, I don't know, interconnected reality <laughs> where, where Memoku servers can do very interesting things with each other. <laughs> okay, we, we have a lot of questions, so I will go with one more. And it's mm -hmm. again regarding the Site subtitling. So they're wondering if there are any plans or options to adjust time codes of site of subtitles in MemoQ. Time codes. Um, I'm not sure what what is banned here. So basically, how the whole thing works is that when you are translating your subtitle file, obviously MemoQ is aware of the time codes, and this is what it sends, among other things, to the preview tool. So the preview tool uh, receives the time code of the segment or segments you are translating, and this is how it displays the accompanying, the appropriate part of the video. Um, we do not want to, I don't think we want to allow translators to change time codes or things like that. I think there are uh, existing tools for that purpose out there, and uh, I believe that this is probably beyond our scope, or at least I do not really understand the use case yet, but if uh, the person who has this gets in touch with me, we can talk about it. But Let's... right now you cannot edit the time codes, and I don't really see, I'm not convinced that we should do something like that yet. <laughs> One moment, I can give the person uh, the right to speak and then uh, they can explain further. So okay. they are already there, so they can speak. Oh, hello, Gurgly. It's Queenie hello. here. Can you hear me? I want yes, yes. to hear me. Hi. I just want to, because when, you, uh, when, you, when a translator um, works on the translation of subtitles, it is likely that um, he or she may spot um, the time code um, not quite correct, maybe mm -hmm. too early. That's the time code ap mm -hmm. appearing, and so it, any any chance for this to be flagged up at least, so that um, they, we can go back to the client and say that well, um, the time in time code is is not quite right. It needs mm -hmm. to be um, uh, you know um, a few frames, um, you know later in coming in and then maybe a few frames um, longer um, any any chance of you know at least this can be flagged up or even adjusted by the by the translator um, well you edit, editing is not possible as I said so we, we do not access the time code that way in MemoQ at least not right now I think one thing that might make sense is is adding comments to the file while you are translating and maybe exporting it to one of the exchange formats like two column RTF and that way uh, we basically have a, a, a channel of feedback uh, for your client for time codes that are off. So basically as you translate you encounter a time code that is 
uh, slightly off in your opinion, then you just leave a comment in MemoQ, export to Column RTF, send it to the customer, and at least that's that's a channel of feedback. Um, there's also suggestions from Luke. He says that, uh, one second, uh, that they can be edited directly from MemoQ if you import, for example, an S SRT file as a simple text file, and then you can edit. So that's another suggestion, or you can log, yeah. unlock the time code rows easily by putting them in alphabetical order. So he was mm -hmm. sharing these two other ways. Mm -hmm. So basically that's a kind of workaround. So maybe you could in import this uh, subtitle file in two instances, you import it as a subtitle file for translation, and you also import it as a text file just for fixing the time codes, and technically it probably enables you to play with the time codes, even if it's not a, an extremely user-friendly way of going about this, but it might be a, a viable way to handle this, so it's a good idea. Okay, so right now we are past the time we set up for this webinar, so we need to end it. So thank you everyone for joining on this session. And we have a lot of questions still that are yet to be answered, so we will work on them and you will have the answers So whenever we send the recording. Uh, thank you again, Gergé, for the presentation. Thank you, and thank you everybody for coming and listening.